far as as far as the Bryant game goes, I want to begin. Marty Fine is their head co is their head coach. He's been there a while, and I thought he did. I thought they did an excellent job in preparing for us across the board, offensively, defensively, and special teams. It was clear that their part of their game plan was to milk the clock as much as possible in an effort to give our our offense uh, fewer um, fewer opportunities. They were effective doing that. Uh, so kudos to them. I thought they played well, uh, pretty much across the board. Um, from from our perspective, I think where we weren't as good as what we needed to be was on defense. And while we did come up with some big plays, uh, and we did have some important stops, we okay? Yeah. And while we did have some important stops, we weren't nearly as consistently as we should be. What we've had, like for example, their 50-yard touchdown. We had a bust on assignments. Now, when we have a bust on assignments, our guys, our players work very, very hard to make sure they understand what they need to do. But in effect, when the call goes in, they probably have three or four seconds to totally understand the assignment, recognize the offensive formation, recognize the threat that they might have to play, and how that adjusts their particular assignment. And they've got to be able to get to the point where they do that instinctively. And sometimes when they have breakdowns, it's easy for a coach to be able to say, ah, he's not on top of his stuff the way he needs to. That's also our responsibility as a staff. It's my responsibility as a head coach. So, so the game's got to be sophisticated enough so we can do a good job of being prepared for different things an opponent can throw at us, but simple enough that all 11 guys can execute flawlessly on the field. And we had, we've been having some of those breakdowns. And I know our, Clayton and our defensive staff is committed, committed to really focusing on that and trying to make sure that, that we have enough answers for a particular offense, but the ability on the part of our guys on the field to execute is also the number is really the number one priority. So we've fallen down a little bit of that. Our tackle wasn't as good as it should should be either. But I think the difference in tackling early in the season where we're bad, we're literally diving and winding up on the ground, which is horrible. In this case, we we're literally in position, but we're literally bouncing off guys. So that tells us our position's pretty good, but we're not doing a good job of wrapping our arms and holding on. And part of that problem might be because in practice, we're not bringing anybody to the ground, so we're not wrapping up. We're not driving them back, but we've got to do a better. We've got to be able to figure out what what the right balance is there. Uh, I'm looking forward to improvement in terms of execution from our defense going forward. Offensively, I thought we did. I thought we did a good job. Uh, the only thing I'm still disappointed with, again, when we get inside the red zone, we got to score a touchdown, and if they beat us and stop us, I can live with that. I cannot live with because we had another penalty. So with six, six, six drives inside, let's say, the 30-yard yard line, one of them, they beat us. We defeated our – they beat us. Uh, but then we still should have five other touchdowns. We had four. The one we didn't have was because we had a penalty. Uh, and I think we wound up getting a field goal off that one. And, yeah, that, that's exactly what we got a field goal. But it was first and goal on the four, and we can't let that happen. So we got to be a little bit more disciplined on offense, but I was pleased with their effort. And once again, across the board, I was really pleased with special teams. I think we've got six units. All six units wound up doing a good job. Um, you know, so on, our, on our PBR stuff, the punt, block, and return, the, Chris wasn't getting big returns, but their kid was only punting it. He was kind of – we had gave him a little pressure. He was shanking some of those. He's only punting them like 24, 25 yards. And we aligned Chris at 40, and he'd run across the field probably 25 or 30 yards and be able to make those plays. So while we weren't getting big returns, our net punt, their net punt at, at least was, was closer to 25 yards, which I was pretty pleased with. The block kick. Um, uh, the kickoff team's done a great job all season, and then we had two penalties on the same on the same play that we're not supposed to have. We, we, got, we got to do a better job there. But couldn't be more pleased with the special teams. Offense did a good job. We got to eliminate the penalties. And from a defensive perspective, we think we understand what our issues are. We got to do a better job of wrapping our arms and driving our legs on tackles. And I feel good about our game plan, but that game plan has got to be executable. And it's got to be executable in a way where our guys are not having busts or making those types of mistakes. And if we got to make it, we got to adapt and we got to be able to adapt and adjust our players, not so much the other way around. That's where I am. Any questions on Bryant? On Sunday, you felt like you needed to watch the film to figure out in the second half if there were improvements on defense. Was, was that encouraging? Yeah, 
I mean, we were, we definitely, we were better on defense. We weren't having the bust. We had a couple of breakdowns. We weren't having those, but the bust is what gave him the 50 yard touchdown. Uh, so we had some pressure on, and one guy was supposed to be in the middle third. Guess where they threw this ball? It was right down the middle in the middle third. That's either an interception, or we should be able to break it up, but it's probably not a completion, let alone touchdown. And what happened is the guy that was supposed to cover the middle third wound up going, and the guy that was supposed to be covering his man was supposed to be in the middle. That's what happened. That's what happened. So, so we had nobody in the middle third. So that was a little bit of an issue. Uh, I thought we did. We still had. We still struggled with regards to tackles, but we had, we had better people in better positions, and we had pretty good halftime adjustments. We were better in the second half. If you look at the statistics, there's, there was a huge improvement in the second half, but we weren't able to get them three and out. We weren't able to do that, but we were effective, I think, in the second half. Reasonably effective in the second half. Any other questions on Brian? Yeah, we're hearing about simplification and breakdowns and whatnot. Why do you think that's happening this year? Well, remember, I think on the defensive side of the ball, we've got six new starters. So I think that's part of it. Uh, our backups, some of them are new as well. Uh, we did change the defense coming into this year. That's part of the reason why I was so optimistic. So, so something we have been doing for two, three years that, frankly, I don't think held up as well as it should have, we've changed. And it takes a little while to kind of build on that. So it's newer players, and probably 35% of our defense is different. Three of the four games you've played so far have been pretty tight ball games. Is that – is it encouraging that your players have been able to, you know, fight through that and pull out the win, or is it maybe a little frustrating that you haven't been able to put games away that you that you haven't passed? I, I think this, and you know, this is worth asking the players when they come up here. But just, um, I think this. I think winning a game under stress is always a better experience and a better learning experience than winning a game handily or without stress. The pressure's on you. You don't get a break during a game. Everybody realized one mistake really does matter. One great play really does matter. So the winning under stress is almost the best thing that could happen to your team. Uh, that will be your best learning experience, and it's the best experience on game day. Now, if – but our job is to live up to our potential. And if we're making enough mistakes that allow the game to be close – then we're not doing that. So I find that frustrating. So on one hand, from a coach's perspective, if we're capable of doing a better job of tackling, not having busts on defense, eliminating the penalties on offense, then I think we can have a pretty good team. That's what our staff should be striving for. That's what our team should be striving for. So when you don't achieve that, I find that frustrating. But the learning experience, winning under stress, is a far valuable thing than winning handily. Having said that, I will take some winning handily, I'll be glad to take that. But, uh, but the, the, the experience we've had so far this year is, is, will I think only help us as the season goes on, or I believe it will. Yeah, is this our conference schedule been more challenging than years past? Uh, not since I've been here. I think we've had a pretty challenging conference schedule, you know, since I've been here. Um, with the exception of the philosophical difference in terms of I prefer not to play an FBS opponent. I mean, we're playing. For the last three years, we've been playing, even four years, we've been, four years, my first year, that was the toughest schedule schools I've ever had up until later on. So in the four years we've been here, we're playing a top 15, we're playing a 90th percentile schedule or close to it. Is that right, Mike? Yeah. So that's, not, I don't think that's new to us. Well, we're not quite ready for A&M because I got another Bryant little story now. So on Fridays, we leave. So on Fridays, Fridays our guys come in around 12.30 or so. And uh, so that's the one morning everybody's got off. So I'm, I'm leaving. So uh, Bryant was staying at the Marriott by, uh, by out by the Dunes Club, which is right where my condo was. So I'm leaving, and I mentioned I know their head coach. In fact, I was going to have a drink with him on – I had a drink with him on Friday night. So this is Friday. I'm on my way to work. It's about noontime or so. And I see a Coastal Carolina security car with his lights flashing leading a bus coming down 82nd Avenue. We're going to turn it to the Marriott. Sure enough, they turn it to the Marriott. Now, again, the security car's got the lights flashing. Not a whole lot of traffic on 82nd Avenue. But, you know, we look, we look good. I'm passing it, and I realize that's got to be Bryant. 
So then it hit me, the coach is a friend. I had seen him for a while. I'm going to meet him that night for drinks. I still got a little time to get into work. I stop. I turn around. I do a U-turn. I follow the bus into the Marriott. I get out. I go up to the front bus, to the only bus. The other bus was still at the airport. The, 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 up to the front bus, this kid gets off, and I go up to him. and said, hi, I'm Joe Mowgli. I'm the coach of Coastal Carolina. So you see his eyes are blinking. He's got to go like this. He's not sure what to say. He goes, well, hi, I'm Andrew. I said, hey, it's a big deal for you guys coming down here. Welcome to South Carolina. He goes, hey, thanks a lot. Then his other kid, I said, what's your name? He says, Sam, or whatever he told me. I'm the head coach of Coastal Carolina. So they go, well, they don't know what to say, but they're all being very courteous and being very, very polite. And I said, hey, guys, I just wanted to come over. Is Coach Fine on the bus? He goes, no, no, he's actually in a car. He's behind us. He's a few minutes behind us. So I said, okay. I said, this is a big deal for everybody here in Myrtle Beach. It's a big deal in South Carolina. Bryant, you guys are coming all the way down here from Rhode Island to play with us. We're excited about it. It's going to be a great game tomorrow. Thanks for coming to South Carolina. And they go like, their mouths are agape and just kind of looking. So I wanted to share that story. Now, here's the reason why I share that. We like to talk about records. We got a record for everything. I bet you this is a Ripley's Believe It or Not. When was the last time a coach in South Carolina or a Division I coach on the East Coast or in the country was there to visit the opposing team when they got to the hotel and got off the bus? I think it's worth doing some research on that. Was there an interesting answer any, any player gave you? No, just like, Good job. yeah. <laughs> no, but friendly, I mean, I think they were like, wow, I think they're going, this is pretty cool. Now you, you make that a new tradition time. every week? No, I'm not going to do it every week. <laughs> Is that a uh, Spygate style? You're trying to get their play sheet? Yeah, that's what I was trying to do. I was trying, trying to make sure if there's anything. So I asked the kids, hey, you guys, what's your first play going to be? <laughs> Alabama. Um, I think they're one or two right now. I think everybody's aware of that. I think if you kind of break them down and take a look at what they do well, uh, I think they've got a pretty good offense. Uh, I think their, you know, their overall offense is ranked about 34th in the country. But when you break it down and you look at it, I think they have a pretty good ability to run and pass. They've got a quarterback that's got a good, solid, strong, accurate arm, and he can run. So he can throw the ball pretty well, and he averages about five and a half yards a carry. He's a quick enough athlete. He can get himself out of trouble. Uh, he can be very effective when he attacks the corner. And if you don't have a, your rush lanes taken care of, he'll take off on you. But he can throw the ball. He's done a good job throwing the ball. He's got, they've got a running back that's averaging about seven yards a carry. Uh, I think it's number 23, if they get the name. And, uh, and then they've got three receivers, two wideouts and one tight end, all of whom started a year ago, all of whom had pretty good seasons a year ago, all of whom have a pretty good seasons this year. So a balanced offense that's been pretty good, that can both run and pass, with a quarterback that can both run and pass, and some running backs and receivers that are making some noise. So our defense is going to have to improve and do the things we had already suggested. We've got to improve on defense if we're going to, going to have the type of season we hope and we're going to have the type, if we're going to have a good night Saturday. Saturday. Uh, their special teams have been solid. They've got a punter that averages about 41 yards or so a, uh, a kick, and they've got a punt return kid that's pretty tough. He's averaging about 14 and a half yards of return. I think they're sound across the board, but those two guys got to be reckoned with. Uh, I think the defense has struggled. Their defense hasn't been, hasn't been that effective. They do have some tough kids. They do get to the ball pretty well. Uh, they, they try to disguise some of their pressures and their, 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 uh, uh, their coverage within the coverage to give you some man, give you some zone. But they have struggled from a defensive perspective. Uh, so that's what, that's what I see so far from Alabama and A&M. Are we good? I think they've done really, really well. Uh, they're, not, they're not at the level that our offensive line was at the end of last year, but our offensive line was very good at the end of last year. But when you look at where they came from, again, you're talking about replacing a, a two-time All-American and all-conference kids. Those are three big, you don't just replace those guys. And the guys, we've got about five guys that are playing there on a regular basis, and they're doing a really, really good job. So you got Don DeGabo and, and, and uh, uh, Jadamian, uh, Jamarian, Jamarian McBride. I was going to say McReynolds. Jamarian McBride at center. He's a freshman. Uh, they're both doing a solid job, especially as a unit. You got Dan and Nushe, the transfer, and Will Walker at guard. You've got um, uh, Chase Tidwell, and we'll have other guys working in there as well. Who would be some of the other guys? 
Jack, yeah. And uh, so you've, you've got a hand. Who else am I missing, Bruce? Sam. No, Sam's a starter from last year. So Sam and Vogans both started last year, yeah, right? So, like, we're expecting to be solid. So the guys on the other side, so the three guys. I think, I think uh, Coach Covington's done a really good job with them. And I think, think that they are doing a good job. And um, they're, they're certainly part of the reason why the offense has been effective. Uh, I had suggested that in the TLC meeting. Uh, I was just playing around when I said it. I said, uh, Oklahoma City wears all white at their home games. I said, why not do it? And then D'Angelo actually asked Coach Dan, could we do it? And they called Alabama A&M, and they were okay with it. So that's just a story to that. Uh, they they play uh, real fast to the ball. You know, they're they're real young in the secondary. Have a big nose guard up front. I think it's about three forty five. But they like to play like a lot of man coverage. Uh, try to disguise their zones. You know, nothing we haven't uh, seen before. You may have heard me ask coach this, but with, with, with all the close ball games that have played so far this year, is it more encouraging that you've been able to pull those games out and get the wins, or more frustrating? <coughs> Well, it's just how you look at it. You got to look at your pros and cons with it. I mean, the bad part about it is I feel like we're playing down to our competition. We haven't rose up to the the level we can play at. You know, like Coach Moglia said, when we get into the red zone, we have a penalty. I remember I had one a couple games ago, and that's killing us. Or he said on, on the defensive side of the ball, you know, just a missed assignment. Like little things like that that we just have to tighten up. And then the pros is, you know, when you get into those tough games, you got to dig deep and grind, like Coach Patton always says, and that's what we've been doing. Uh, basically, that's pretty much what, what I was going to say. Um, as a team, we just we just need to come together more. You know, we just basically we beat ourselves. You know, most of the time, a blown coverage leads to a touchdown. So basically, we just giving the game away. But it's just it's a good. I guess I guess it helps us out a lot because we can we we deal with adversity. And we fight through it and come out with the victory. So, the way y'all played in the second half on defense, pitching a shutout in the second half, it, I know it's been an up and down year for y'all defense. Is that encouraging what y'all were able to do in the second half? Can y'all build on that going forward? Uh, yeah, yes, sir. We pretty, we pretty much we, we should be able to build for it with that. But basically, we as a defense, we just we we can finish wrong, but we need to start fast. So we 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 can figure out a way to start fast against opponents. Then we won't really have that, you know, have to really that hard time trying to fight in the fourth quarter stuff. Uh, 